Hey, so today we have a slightly different format and the episode is a little bit longer. The first part is an interview with Prontip Mankong, who is a former Les Majestés prisoner. And then Samai will be joining me to chat a little bit about the prison system in Thailand. So yeah, let's get to it. So today we're joined by Prom Tip uh, Man Kong. Is that the correct pronunciation? Prom Tip Man Kong. Thank you. <laughs> and Prom Tip is an artist, an author, a YouTuber, an activist, and a former political prisoner for Les Majestés offences. Did I miss anything? You 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 have quite a a, length, a long background of different I, stuff. I am a business go to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and a business person. And uh, their book, uh, which is called All They Could Do to Us, was released in 2019, which is a detailed and very poetic account of life in Central Women's Prison, Bangkok. So, Prantip, welcome to the show. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so, actually, to start off, I wanted to ask you about your activism work before you were jailed. Mm-hmm. So, the work with the Prakai Phi Theatre. And there's quite a long history of radical theater in Thailand. Uh, and I, I've, I've often seen your activism described as being progressive, but this work was very much about class struggle. Isn't that right? Like it seems like progressive is maybe an understatement. Mm, how can I say? If, if, if I could say about the activity on Burkai Fai, it seemed like, okay, we are in, in the left side. <laughs> And yeah, we study Marxist, Tosky, a lot of books that we have to read, that we have to study and discuss. So we have Pergai Fai, it's a big group. So um, sometimes we have to work in the different places and then we just have to like to set another Pergai Fai, the small cell, you know. Oh. Uh-huh. And then um so I I I just create Pragai Fi like with a, with kind of theater group in mm-hmm. it as a sale of Pragai Fi. Sometimes it's it's so difficult to, to 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 work or to to practice with the labor because Pragai Fi okay, it's the concept of the lab size that you have to work with the labors. But mm. uh, when I was 19, it seemed like everything is quite hard because I, I, I don't know how to, how to communicate with, with, with them. Even for people, it's, even for normal people, I, I, I always have that kind of problem. But, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so but I have to practice a lot, a lot, a lot. And then it's, okay. it's like, okay, but at the beginning, I could say that I didn't expect that I will become like this because become become like what? Sorry. Like okay, people always uh like look at me as a uh, as their herb, as their at uh, the young generation, at uh, the leader. Mm. But I knew that I am not. You never, you never wanted to become a leader. Yeah, I mean leader like the leader that that walk in front of everyone. I I don't wanna be mm. like that. I I I wanna be a team, and you know? I love to work as a team more. Mm. So, but but okay, Super Guy Fi is is has some some sense of that. And they give me some chance to to set some topic that I want to talk about. So that with that age, I I was so naive, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I I just I just want to make a a play like in the mob in in the protest because when I when I have to like study about the protest of the people. Like we have to go and talk to them and 
and listen to them. But I feel that so what? Because okay, I listen to them. I I take that feeling from them. I take the information from them. But I never, I never give anything back. Yeah. And when um when they started to set up a guy five at that moment mm -hmm. and then one of them asked me that if I want to join because they knew that I that I can make a, a play the play I can do the theater play I can teach the people I can give the workshop and I have that kind of energy so this was you were trying to give something back yeah like you yeah. said before yeah. you felt like you were taking this was a way of giving back yeah yeah so that's why I, I, I agree to join the group. But you know, after that two years, what you said that we have to, we, we, we gonna have the brand, we gonna have the play, but, but we stuck with the books. It's, it's like, like they put some, some logic in my, on my brain. And then when I wrote the draw, it's like, it's flow. I knew is that what I wanna say, what I wanna talk, what I, what which kind of topic I wanna put on on this portrait. It is quite easy. I can write the the role play like in fifteen minutes. And and what what was the main theme of the work? Revolution is the is the only way to to change. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to talk too much about. Uh, the 112 Les Majestés charge that you received for your work, for your theatre work. Um, and from what I heard, you're maybe a bit sick about talking about that as well. Um, so if anybody is interested in learning more about Les Majestés, we did an episode of that back in December. But what I'm really interested to hear is your opinion on class struggle in relation to your experience in prison. Um, but, of course, we have to talk about how you got to prison in the first place. So could you maybe like very quickly tell us about how you ended up in jail for two okay. years? Is this, is this because of the one one theater play in the Thomasad University? And um, yeah, but, af but after that, after that, like one year, I just got arrested because because of the coup. It's not because of the play. I believe I I yeah. I believe that that is not because the play is the is an art so people can so if you if you watch one movie so you can think many things but I I think it, that is because of the coup that's why they decide yeah. to keep people that talking about the monarchy and yes my play was talking about the monarchy for sure uh, because that is the way yeah. to to achieve the revolution so so i so i talk about that and then uh so they decide yeah. to to keep every work about that and then i just got arrested when i was in the the airport uh-huh during the travel to 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 austeria you were trying to run away? I got a scholarship. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. And okay. then, so everything like, bye bye. So I have a chance oh, to go to study in another place, but it's joyful too. Yeah. So, so you ended up in uh, Bangkok yeah. Central Women's Prison. And my first question is are 112 Les Majestés prisoners are they treated differently by the inmates or by the guards or something rather than compared to normal uh, uh, the simple condition is is quite same like I have to sleep on on the floor as as everyone and um, so but what they did is it was like they keep on eyes on me all the time it's not just for the guard but for some prisoners too they just they just look at me and then they report to the to the guard too and then even when i when i was cry everyone knew that i cry 
and then like they just they just they just come off like one officers like I uh, like call me to to their office and I said what what happened why you cry, but. I knew that I just cry in the small, like small corner, you know. A few people are there, and I feel like, oh my god. So they really keep extra attention on the one, one, two prisoners. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes that um, give me some benefit because um, because uh, when I have to move to move to another building because I did something that they don't. That they didn't like uh, because I I tried to to publish some information about yeah, prison. Yeah, you were writing in prison, right? Yeah, yeah, and then and then like they are like trying to block me and then move me in another place. Mm. But in another place, it seemed like I I have more space, has more friends and have more opportunities. But they still keep an eye on me. Uh, because they they put me in the rooms of the um, of the old people, right. pregnancies, wow. and and two like two table like two officer tables are in front of the room, so it mean they keep an eye on me during days and night. <laughs> right. Yeah, but so, it's good. <laughs> well, <laughs> um. And so you know, I saw in an interview you did with Prasha Thai, it says that you consider yourself to be part of the underclass, and this term, the underclass in Thailand, is something we've explored before on Din Deng. And I'm wondering what the underclass means to you, and why, despite being you know a university-educated person, you consider yourself to be part of this class. Because my root, I think my we we are the same. I don't feel any fucking different with me and and the underclass because I just have more opportunities and I just have I just I just have a good family. That's or because in my family, um. So I I I, I should tell you that with my harness. My father was a drug dealer. I never said it in in any media, but yeah, and mm. and so I, yeah, and and my and my dad was in jail when I was young, and that's why I feel that I was because because I understand that why he sell it, why he carry that, why he, because we are where we was very very fucking poor at that time and he needs to to give us with the with the best education he want to send us to the bed school in pisan Lok. at that time it, it was um saint nicholas mm. it's a catholic school and, and that time is kind of expensive you know and then he said okay mm. i i don't want my my daughters living in the village study with uh with a uh, with a t-shirt is always with drunk <laughs> drunk and he said okay just find money make money and send my daughter to the better place that is that is it seemed like when when i was in prison i feel like yeah we just are we we from from the same route and anytime i understand them I understand some people that that they sell drugs and then yeah yeah it is it's not yeah so you had this close yeah you had this close feeling of of, of yeah. class consciousness with the people you were in prison with and yes, most of those yes. people were and drug also i knew right? that um because with the with with the policy of toxin my my father had to be in prison like nine years and and i Right. And then I I keep research about that po- that policies, and I keep research about the information about the drug se- seller, uh, and I found out that it's just only one that has no ways like they will not go to jail. Yeah, there just has a big mafia. Every one of you like get to keep in in the prison, but the big one's still there. 
So I feel that oh, okay, even this way, mm. it's still not fair, you know. <laughs> I think, mm. Um. So I'm wondering, from what I understand, there's also you know quite significant class divides in prison, right? So. I don't know. Maybe you could talk about how that hierarchy works when you're actually inside. Yeah, we okay. We ha- I I I has to think a lot because we have uh, a lot of, like four kinds of hierarchy up there. So we have like the special kids, okay, the VIP kids, the sub super VIP. Who uh-huh. who is the special kids? The special kids it seem like the the people who reach. And has no connection. They just rich. They just come in prison, and they has mm. money. And what they like a white white collar criminal. Ah, uh, yeah, something like that. No, some some of them are like a uh, business owner, but I don't. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. And and some some is yeah. What kind of that? Some are like from 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 a good family, and so they they had a support from their families. And then they just come mm. to prison and spend money there. <laughs> and the VIP, the VIP um, has money and connection, but it's not a big connection. They just have connection with some mm. officer that can support them to to live better. Uh huh. But mm. super VIP that has a big connection, they can live. Like they can live in their room. Ah, oh, see. So they get a private uh-huh. room, right? Yeah. Yeah, they can have their own room. The private bedroom um, has uh, like um, people who always send them the food. Yeah. So they don't. They don't need to to come downstairs to do anything. It's just change mm. the hotel. Something like that. Yeah, and. Yeah, they they're super VIP, and another type is uh is the people like me, like the people who come with a political issue. Mm-hmm. But what what about like the normal people, the working class people, drug yeah. offenses and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they have to spend life with the fucking rules in prison. Uh huh. But if they have money. Or if they has some connection with other officer, there can be a horse of of the black market. Mm. So they collect money in prison a mm. lot. I I can assure you that a lot of money is, is roll in prison every yeah. days. Mm. And 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 so. You yeah sorry so you also mention regarding political activism outside of prison. Mm-hmm. You wrote um, if people outside the prison do anything, your life inside the prison is not going to be as usual. Yeah, uh, it will be harder for you on the inside. So could you could you explain or give some examples of what that meant for you and the other political prisoners? Oh hey, the good example is. Is some article, some some information about my case that I wrote and sent it to Prashad Thai to publish. And uh, when they saw that, like a lot of officers come and they like, punch me. I I didn't do anything. Yeah, I follow the rules. I follow them as I don't know. I I I don't want to make any trouble. Yeah, I was also wondering how how did the experience of being a political prisoner shape or maybe change or develop your political views and understanding once you got out? Wow, I love this question. Okay, it seemed like I I understand more about how to how people keep awake of the politics issue because because it's not easy i i was taught i mean when i was in in the in the societies of activism so it seemed like okay yeah we just have to build people to join us to get that ideologies to understand the class to understand the societies and understand everything Mm. and then they will change the the country 
but it's not true that is not true you have you have to you have to work more than that because this fuck up society as thailand people always have to to try something to try t- some some something to eat something to feed their families some yeah there has a lot of issue that they have to deal with it's mm. not just for reading the book and then fun <laughs> so it's not like that if you need the real i mean the real change you have to work more and i feel like yes it's my work is harder that that what i feel and mm. it's so i i try i try to to work with people after after prison term like uh people who was my friend in the prison to join the group mm. to make them like the empower uh workshop or something like that or support them for the curry but it's not it's not that work you know because with this struggle of of thai society is is so hard but we will have the way but anyway i i still think that if we can change from the top everything will gonna change too but not to like to put just only that oh, i would change the top i would crack everything no you have to 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 work from the ground too and then yeah it's it's so you we have to balance about that and mm. and 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 also it seems like um now is a that's why the protest this year is very low because um because people that has no money to come and people in thailand even they want to change the society we didn't work enough we didn't work hard enough to to make them to make them feel that this is the last chance to change that's why mm. they're still they're still worry about um the condominium their cars their job they are not mm. they are not like people in burma uh in because there they work harder than us and that is what i feel and i feel like okay what i could do is just work harder <laughs> so um I mean, obviously, you hold quite radical left-wing political beliefs, and I'm curious about how those were received by the other inmates who were not political prisoners. So the the regular inmates, how how did they kind of see you and your political ideas? I never I never talk about about uh, left wings in prison okay. because it's not necessary. I never uh, tell them about about what I believe in politics. I just ask them. What I ask is like, okay, so you work so hard, what you gain, prison term. Mm. Yeah, and I just ask them and let them realize themselves. Mm-hmm. It's not necessary to talk about the ideologies or the theories of 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 everything in prison you have to just understand people more and i can assure you that most of them love me yeah they love me yeah. then then we that's why we can join the organization together when we got released mm. because because they they knew that i am not that kind of a person who always put something in their brain You were just a listener. You learned to kind of listen and yeah, understand, right? Yeah, and mm. then just just ask them that what what you think that what what you can do, and okay, we have some choice. People do this. People do this. And if this happened to you, what you gonna do? Something like this is is simple ways to come to communicate because I. I could not do as as some yard. I could not do as da da video because <laughs> it's not me. 
so I cannot like push people to to fight. I cannot like get people to to build the protest in in the prison, and I I feel that it's useless. Yeah, I I don't think that is that is can change anything. So I just okay, just keep going with a bit by a bit. So. Mm -hmm. And um, in your book, there's a section where you're talking about Mondays, and you're writing about the manual labor, and you wrote that the inmates. Uh, they're forced to crawl on their knees when approaching the officials, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and that and this is a kind of punishment which is intended to teach what women should be like. Should right? be yes, yeah. yeah. And and is is there a lot of this kind of enforced gender role training exercises or some shit? And 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 how do the inmates respond to this? We cannot. We, so we cannot exercise because it's not good that women have to exercise. Ooh. And what else? It's... How can I say it? So we cannot exercise. We have to speak very, very soft. And we have to call um, everyone as mother. Uh, everyone can be our mom. Uh -huh. And the guards, like you have to call the guards meh. Yes, yes, meh, meh, or yeah, mother. And it's not about just just the guard. It's about the uh, so there has some 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 classes of, of of prisoners too. If you are a new one, so you have to call everyone meh. And then if the, if you have like some more connection, like you spend times there like six months up, you can be meh too. Is <laughs> okay, and I will be up to me, to mama, and then I will like has more, more power. Is is the societies of, of the the of women in, in terms of, of one man, you know, like before the the um, the guys Thai guys, can have many wives. It seemed like that. Women have to be compete to be the favorite one of the officer. That's why um, women prison is different than men prison, because they just play the game that women have to be a favorite one for the office. It sounds like a, like you're talking about a harem or something like that, right? Yeah, Does it so, feel like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 I feel like that that if if you are a favorite one, so you you can you can get many things, you can ask many things, you can give have the good food from the from outside. You can you can have like um a smart things, a beautiful things, it can be your stuff. You can have Right. Yeah. But if you cannot be a favorite one, so you are not thing. It's something like that. Right. And with men prison, they are combined. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they fight together. Well, in men prison, it's just about fucking fighting, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it, women, we have less violence than men. But they ha we have the fucking issue like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And And... and so Thailand has the highest women's incarceration rate in the world. And I've tried looking for reasons for this, but there, there is not very good data out there. So, so why do you think that is? Why does Thailand have so many women in prison compared to other countries? Uh, why I think, in my opinion, Thai women, is, they're stupid. I can say that they're they're okay. stupid, yeah, because they're in their mind they just follow love. Can say that love is the big issue that make women go to prison. Please continue. <laughs> okay. Explain. Like, if you love one guys, okay, most of most of them are uneducated girls. So they just follow fucking love. They just they just try to be a lover of the man. And after that, that man 
carry dogs that man selling drug that's man like some people just okay i love this man i don't want him to go to in, in jail so I, i i just accept everything myself because i love him and there there were uh, like a lot of yeah. cases of yes. this that you saw and also and i another time it, it was like um the man asked the man to 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 sell drug to get money from her and another cat is was uh the violent the the domestic violent so he just he just doesn't love her anymore so he he just punch her every day so she cannot handle that and then she just fight back then she, he dead <laughs> then she went to prison it's it's just too kind that i that two years that i tried to ask about that with the young people in prison they follow love but if yeah it, it, but it's not just because of their stupid <laughs> but okay i can say that they are stupid but it's not because of their born born to be stupid <laughs> because of <laughs> no it sounds like a patriarchy yeah, issue yeah, to me yeah, really no like, They're from broken families. They just need someone to love. They just need some some uh perfect families, father, mother, children, and they just choose the wrong person. It's it's like that, and I feel like because I I can compare with my dad, that that because. Women in prison. After they went, it they still they spend times in prison, like three months. The man has another girls already, <laughs> and I I ask them that if if you get released, so you will continue with him, and they said yes because we love I love him, I will forgive him anyway. Like, What did you say to them? I I said you are crazy. You are so crazy, and you are a stupid girl, because because they leave you in prison like two years, two three years, and then you still love him. Why you you don't try to love yourself? And I said, because I love myself. That's why I love him. Fuck! What? Which kind of logic? But it's okay. I like okay. I understand, and 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 after that, you know, times will make them realize themselves because the guys never come to visit, and yeah, I I saw most of them turn to turn to be uh, lesbian in in prison. It's not just because of the loneliness, but because they are not um, not someone you can live with. You you can stay with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's good that they realize themselves. Yeah, and um, sorry, just to change the subject a little bit, I I was watching an interview. <laughs> sorry, I I would love to go on, but we have such little time. Um, yeah, I was okay. watching an interview with Bank today, who was also arrested yeah. as part of your theatre group, and he was talking about how imprisonment is just not an effective solution. He described it as pouring gasoline onto a fire. Uh, would you agree to that? Yeah, I agree. But more over than that, I, I think, prison is not thing. What do you mean by that? It's just, it's just another place to fight. Fight who? Fight what? Fight with the system, the fucking system. So you just have to fight, everywhere. Yeah, okay. If it, okay, it's good that 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 we knew that. Okay, this is this is another game. So, ah, okay, they just put us in in prison and then they they will keep control everything. But but what? So we have to keep fighting even there. So we have to find more people that agree with us. At least if we if we do something, they will not be our enemies. Uh-huh, because you know the the monarchy always work with people in prison. Mm. Could you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Okay, like um, 
the 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 big policy is uh, amnesty, yeah, like something like that. I I don't know that is correct. Yeah, English, that's correct. But, exactly. But but the, yeah, but the kings always forgive people. Okay, so you just return to the societies and and is from the king, is from the monarchy, uh huh, and so people in prison always put in their mind that they give another chance because of the king, so they work with that too, and I know you know, I believe that if. They work more. The people from that that just get released from prison, they will become the army, like the 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 people armies, for protect the monarchy. Ah, uh, so people come out more more, more royalist yeah, after they've yeah, been to jail. Yeah, because and I I has noticed that in under Rama ten they give amnesty like three times already. So a lot of people come out because of him, and then they will they will protect him more. Mm. Mm-hmm. So wow. this 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 what I what I what I wanna say that okay they work in everywhere and we should work in everywhere too. <laughs> yeah. And and you got out early as well. Was that from the monarchy or was that yeah different? Yeah. Yeah, that was from yes, the monarchy. Yes, from him. From from King Rama Knight, I think. Yeah. Are Are you grateful to King Bumipon for that? I a bit sad because because I want to stay there more. Yeah. Yeah, because um, my term is could be it should be end at six October, but I got really I got released at um. August, I need to spend mm. until until my my October. I don't wanna no. I don't wanna. I I didn't wanna receive that. I I went to the officer office and I asked that can I stay more, and they said no 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 you you could not stay. <laughs> and I said, but I don't wanna go. <laughs> Please, it's something like. Like, and and is 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 not a joke, you know. I at that time I feel that I don't wanna go out. What did you What did you want to stay for? I want to stay for my artwork there. Okay. It, yeah, I I could not finish it. You know, it seemed like it's. I need more time to finish. I know I need more time to to finish my artwork. And I need more time to to collect any writing, because I I I hide in many many way may like many uh, ways, and I hide with many like places. Uh, yeah, many places and many papers, and I have to like, hey, where is my writing? And then yeah, right. I like, oh, I need I need more time, because I have to like. Take it out a bit by a bit, and I feel like, oh my god. Yeah, was it painting the artwork? No, it's writing. It's the crown. What? The, the crown. You made a crown. Yeah. What did that symbolize? <laughs> yeah, I have an opportunity. I had an opportunity to to study to make um. Uh, jewelry. I don't know how to say it in English. Like some, some, some jewelry for class. Uh huh. Okay. And I make a crown. Nice. It's an yeah. interesting choice. <laughs> yeah, and I want, and I wanna finish it. I wanna because I knew that if I have that, I can make it like this. <laughs> I can make it <laughs> upside down. Upside you know? down. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah, that's why I wanna finish it. But okay, the with with the knowledge I have, I I can do some artwork with 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 that kite. So I learn from cool. them, and we use for another paper. Nice. <laughs> so once you were released, um, once you were first released, uh, I'm curious about the media and the NGO response because you've spoken quite disparagingly. Of them before as well. 
Yes, yes, yes. Could you talk a little bit about that, maybe? Yeah, it's not just only NGO. Okay, NGOs work for for that topic, work for the issue. So they need to for Les to, to put the issue. Yeah, for Les Majesty Day, and it's not about the NGO. It's about the peoples in the politics, um, in the politics society too. I feel that they, what they expected from me, that I just like like they they wanna see, I cry. I just want to see that I talk about the monarchy badly, that I, that they want to see I um, I just I just tell them some information and I, and I feel that I'm fucked up with information. Yeah, some the first the first the first times uh, that I give um, the information with uh, with the NGO that that I really respect because they. They allow me to talk as my way. I just, I just tell the the fairy tale, to, <laughs> to them. What do you mean? What fairy tale? Fairy tale. I just wrote them my fairy tale, and then I, I just tell my fairy tale, and then yeah. I, I, I think, I think, uh, because a lot of NGOs work with fucking information, but what they will not have that. It's the feeling. They will not understand my feeling. They they will understand the oh. issue. They will understand. They will understand the information. They will understand everything with the numbers. But mm. okay, I will give you some feeling. I I will let you feel me. Yeah, and I will not like, and I will not cry with. With oh, I'm so sad because they have to walk by my knee. I'm not that kind of person, you know. So I just okay. So so you gave them a the yes. fairy tale because it was a better representation. That's the only way you could have yes. them understand yes. what it felt yes. like. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so you're a, you're an artist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. And and so. Um. Yeah, after your mm -hmm. release, you gave a performance on Cal yep. San Road. Uh, you were wearing mm -hmm. the white dress. It, uh -huh. it was quite, quite a performance. <laughs> I liked it. Um, I, I'm curious why you chose Cal San, which is the most oh. Farang Chinese place you could go for, with all the tourists. Oh, uh, because that is my first time to perform after released. So I need to make sure that is my stage that people will will welcome like yeah more welcome but were, you, were you targeting foreigners or yes foreigners and also Khao San Road is the place that I I always run during the protest you know and I feel that I that that is my road <laughs> yeah what I really loved when I saw the video of it was you have all these Farang who have come to Thailand on holiday yeah. by Tiao. Yes. You know. Yeah. And and now they're like confronted by this prisoner straight <laughs> out of jail. Yeah. You know, covered in I was it was it uh red paint or it was uh, the lipstick. it looked like makeup or it was lipstick, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like covered in lipstick and shit, and wearing a white dress, it kind of looks like blood at the same time. And they're just looking like, what the fuck? And then I think your friend was yeah. there, being like, she was a political yeah, prisoner, yeah. you know. No, and it cool. kind of like it really confronted them in that it was very in their faces. Like, welcome to this fucking kingdom. I hope you have a good holiday. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good to, and I like to see what, what I like to see. It's the face of people. That's why I, I like to 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 perform close to people because I wanna mm. I wanna see their eyes. I wanna feel their breathe. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. And that's why I I shoot that. But in the second times, I give the the same perform in the um, Jadu Jack market. There's a right. lot of Thai people. Yeah. Um, it's quite different, but. At that time, I I feel uh, comfortable to mm. to face with that situation. So, 
Hey, you let's go. <laughs> nice. And uh, so kind of just to get towards the end here, I, I, I was wondering, you know, before you left Thailand, what, what was it like since you were released? I, I know that people really struggle to find work, to support themselves, mm -hmm. to find jobs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've moved abroad now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm guessing it didn't go very well in Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, so, so kind of how, how hard was it to, to go back into Thai society? With the expectation from people, it's quite hard. But mm. uh, for job or for work, I like some uh, offer me some some work because they know that I can and can write. I am good writing. I I can yeah. I was yes. So they they asked me for for this, but uh, I decide to to not get that kind of job because I knew that the police an eye on me and if I work with some some company they will have the trouble oh so you didn't want to make trouble for other people yeah for right. yeah so I, I will I will just okay I should keep myself to to not harm people <laughs> like okay yeah just keep it and and try to find another job like um to find an online job or everything that I could do uh-huh and has so luckily i i have my my families to support uh, my apartment so i i don't have to pay uh, for the rent i just have to like find some 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 money to to electricity to the water something like that but um for eat yeah and also i i have some support from people is uh hok moon but Come on, it is sixty thousand support from 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 the people who's always from supporting. donations for donation and then right. but okay you know that that, that money it's okay you can live like three months yeah for a start because you have to buy phone you have to buy right. laptop you have to buy new clothes you have to buy like something for a start a new life yeah what I sacrifice for is was my book. So that's what you were working on when you yeah. came out. Yeah, and that is healing me too. So I just get it out, mm. get it out, get it out, uh -huh. and I have to to talk with the psychologist, and so um, yeah, many things to to deal with. Mm. And I live, I can live in Bangkok like five hundred a week. Wow. Uh, yeah, five hundred baht a week. Yeah, because and <laughs> I I can live with that for for focusing on mm. on my book. And um, so, why did you leave Thailand? Okay, my heart was broken. <laughs> no, it's... I think you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I yeah it's it's joke but it's a bit related. Okay. Um, um, my sister, she saw me with, with, uh, with the fuck of situation because I, I always think about prison and I always want to go back to prison. And she said, it's not good for you. You are not the same. Mm -hmm. I need mm. you to, to move. But my, my psychologist said that sometimes I feel guilty with the people uh, mm. yeah the people who are still in prison in prison your and and also with the uh, another political prisoners because i feel mm. that i get too much support and i mm. i sacrifice less than them some of them sacrifice all their life for for fight for mm. for that but they get, has no any fucking support and I try to to use my light. Okay, I can say that I have some some spotlight. I I try to to use my spotlight to to shine to them too, but it seems like people's people's uh, expect someone that that so like cute or have some energies. They don't care about the um, another's politics issues. 
because they feel that is is underclass. Yeah. I could say that. Yeah. So a lot of people in the in the let's say progressive areas of uh, the yeah. Thai democracy movement, they don't yeah. actually care about yeah. the underclass yes. in your opinion. So it's yeah. like okay, I I I know that okay, my my work is just raise it up, <laughs> okay. I write right. about this person that when I w I meet her and she's like this and she fights for this and okay it's work sometimes but sometimes it's not work <laughs> but okay I I just like try my best and I I still feel guilty even I did everything already I I just I just do like I just did everything and then I feel I still feel guilty and I don't I just mm. start on my bed and I think like. What can I do? What can I do for my life? And then my sister said, "Move. We already pay for the school. We already pay for the the airplane. You have to move." Mm. So she was already yes. abroad. Right, right, right. Yeah. So how are you feeling now since you've been out the country? Ooh, I feel that it's good that I can step out of. Of the problem of the chaos, yep. Yeah. And I can see the whole picture, and I can know that which part I can support. Actually, I I will not support all <laughs> because I could not do that. But which part that has no one care? So I just okay. Mm. I just put my my everything that I have to to raise it up as before. But I. Now I I can say that I can do it better than than in Thailand. Now so I have a lot of teams that support me as a volunteer. You know, they just okay. I can say that that because of of my book. So I have a lot of volunteer to to, to join my project. What is what is your project that you're? What are you working on at the moment? I mean, you also have the YouTube channel. Yeah. Hello, I'm from prison. And the fair, fairly Good. tell yes. Facebook page. Uh, are, are those the projects you're talking about, or is yeah, there some yeah, other yeah. stuff as it's well? the project that I'm talking about. But be uh, okay, I can. I I have to tell you that before we have like a YouTube channel, we have to 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 give the um, empowerment program for for the former political prisoners too. We try to we try. <laughs> We try to support people, as in as in Burma, you know, that they have like a strong, strong uh, association, the organization for uh, for for former political yeah, prisoners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we try to to deal with to to be, but in our way because we know that Thai people they has another condition, so we just support them, like. Like what kind of stuff do you do to support them? Psychologies, uh, the healing program, uh, support the career, and also support the case because some of them the case are not finished yet, so we have to to continue to support. And if some of them like like uh, like Bang or like uh, Somyot, if they have to return in jail, so what we could do. Uh, so we support the lawyer, and also we have. Um, uh, but what I what I need the support is about the application that I create myself. Yeah, it's called uh, email call. It's for for people like for people who is in in the protest and have some emergency, and if you. If you have uh, like if you have any fucking accidents or you get hurt with with the police, so you can call directly to to my team. They will go to take you and 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 take care about about that about your case. And also we have like the modules to be um, effective political prisoners because we have to be prepared. <laughs> And it's a it's an app, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's an app. What's it? How do you spell it? E M E R C A R. Yeah. Oh, E M E R C A R. E M E R. Okay, yeah. I'll check it yeah. out. Yeah, and also um with 
with a counselor like one one two counselor we have the team to if if you feel that you will maybe you you has a chance to to get that <laughs> so you have you you can connect with us and also you can maybe you you need some some advice for for that okay so i i just because it's, it's not just about case you know when when you get some warning from the police you it's not just about the case that you have to focus on it's about your families your uh, properties everything you have to prepare so we are here mm. so you can just connect us yeah that's great that's yeah, yeah we just have to <laughs> prepare um so that's been really great and fascinating and it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show and uh i'll put some links in the description to your projects and uh, i'm really looking forward to your book coming out in english and when it does we'll be sure to promote okay. it okay maybe next two years i don't know <laughs> oh next year. okay it's, it's a, long a long way, way. but i'll, I'll patiently <laughs> okay. wait okay so thank you so thank much thank you so much too <laughs> And we're back, and I am now joined by Samai. Samai, how do you do? Uh, I do better. I was fighting off a cold um, for, for uh -huh. the last week, so I'm now doing okay. Splendid. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've listened to the interview now, and I mean, yeah, before yeah. before I did the interview, I, I thought it was going to be a bit of a bleak episode, but mm -hmm. after we talked, I just kind of felt like I don't know, good vibes. No, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of interesting points in there. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, just the vibes, you know what I mean? Oh, like you oh, expect even, somebody yeah, to... even the vibe, even the vibe was very fun. That was a very fun vibe. Yeah. Um, and so I thought maybe we should bring things down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and oh, and just, yeah, just quickly talk about the carceral state in Thailand a little mm -hmm. bit more widely. And uh, as we alluded to in that interview, Thailand has, it's hard to get a definite figure, but I've, between the fourth and the tenth, we think highest incarceration rate worldwide, which is uh, regardless, you know, you don't want to be way high up there. Really, yeah, being in the top ten of anything like that is definitely not exactly a good sign. No, and uh, I'm pretty sure Thailand still has the world's highest women's incarceration rate as well. So that sucks. And so I wanted to throw a few numbers out there. So let's just kind of go through these. Um, 143 out of 144 of Thailand's prisons report overcrowding, which is mm. not good. Uh, the carceral food budget is 49 baht per day, and that's capped at a prison. This is a few years out of date, but this is the best data we could get. Uh, so that, that budget is capped at a prison population of, at the time, 190... Wait, what is that? 190,200. Uh, but the real prison population is nearly double that so as a result of that almost all inmates are going without proper food which is also very much not good uh prisoners who are serving drug related charges or are drug addicts so you know like a lot of the time drug addiction can lead to other crimes right like yeah, yeah. burglary and muggings yeah. whatever so, so it's hard to get a good estimate on how many people are in there for drug offences. Uh, one I found suggested it was around 80% of the population were in for drug or drug-related charges, which is staggeringly high. Um, and that, I mean, we can attribute that to tax in, right, in 2003. Mm. I mean, it, whenever you decide to do a crackdown of, a, of, of drugs, you sort of, you sort of miss the problem. Uh, sorry, yeah, you, you miss the point. You know, it, it really is less of a matter. I mean, this is just general um, theory about legalization of or, or decriminalization, beg your pardon, of, of drug use. So whenever you create a safe environment for people to um, sort of get the help they need if they're struggling from, you know, addiction versus if they're just recreational users, if you create that safe environment, not only can the state benefit economically, um, from, you know, having fewer people die and having fewer people be a strain on the system, you are cr uh, you're just basically uh, um, reinvesting in human capital and, and trying to um, uh, develop develop um, a, a better uh, uh, labor force. Well, that, uh, that kind of begs a question to me, which is if kind of what you're saying is, you know, not having big a big drug epidemic or a lot of people in prison is mm, mm. beneficial for society from any standpoint so then why do authoritarian capitalist countries 
criminalize drugs so harshly. Oh, well, I mean, it, then, then, then it's a social element. It's like, you know, the, the drugs have the stigma attached to them as well. And it's like, because Thailand is... I mean, I don't know how much of a theocracy it really is, but it's definitely a th theocratic in some elements. So they have a lot of moralistic judgments. Um, but that aside, there is still a, a political um, gain to uh, sort of um, distancing yourselves from from the drug users because they're seen as crazy because of that social stigma. So capitalizing off of a social stigma um, can benefit you politically. However, you know, as we saw with moving towards being cool with um, cannabis, um, uh, there is, a, I think there's a different element there uh, because being cool with cannabis sort of tries to... Uh, Thailand is a weird relationship with, with, like, with like the West and the foreign powers, right? And one of, th one of the weird parts of the relationship is that when America said no, um, weed bad, Thailand said, well, yeah, weed bad. However, if you look at Thailand's history, hemp and just even even THC cannabis. Was, I mean, even know, in, in living memory, I mean, I've spoken it, to old yeah. people before who were yeah. like, yeah, you know, my mum used to put uh, cannabis oil in my in my um, jock or whatever in the morning. <laughs> <In> my... <laughs> Seriously. Jock. Or amazing. cow bomb, actually, I think in, it was, in yeah. The, in the, oh, my God, that would be yeah. amazing. Oh, like that if would they had, make if me want a little to bit eat. ill or something like that. That would make me want to a, eat it. Yeah. That would actually make me want to eat it now. You don't like I, it? You don't like cow bomb? I, I, no, I'm... Okay, well, there was a period of time where that was all we ate, you know. Okay. And then I got really thrown... I mean, come on. Look, how do I explain to a, a white person here where <laughs> I am right now? Oh, yeah, we okay. eat rice porridge. It's like, it's like wet rice... In a, in a broth i mean yeah. you know from, from from you know like us we, okay, I, I, we're going off. I almost feel like we're going off topic here we are going Maybe off topic not. Uh, <laughs> i don't know but the point um, is hold on. okay the 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 usage of of cannabis right yes but the point yes. my, my point was that the usage of cannabis actually is like a return to thai cultural sort of practices from before yeah so it's not out of character for the government, which is sort of uh, the, the, the Thai state, I'll say, which has historically been pandering to, you know, like nostalgia and, and sort of Thai mm. values and traditions to legalize right. slash decriminalize cannabis because mm. of the historical co uh, connections in Thai society. However, you know, other stuff... Um, has has no like relationship with Thai well, that's society. A, that's an interesting one because uh, I I'm just writing an article at the moment about you know uh, well I'm I'm for a bit of an article I'm writing now I'm talking about opium and mm. opium only became a quote unquote problem for the Thai state after a bunch of American soldiers or a lot of American soldiers started shooting it and smoking it in Vietnam mm. and that's mm. when oh oh hold up you know we got to stop all this opium production so. Mm. You know, I I don't think opium is going to make a comeback in the same way that cannabis has. But uh, oh, I mean, just absolutely not. Compare. But that's that's a, that's a different. That's that's more it's of a, a, a yeah, it's of a different a drug, animal of a drug science question. Um, just speaking of cannabis as well, um, I wanted to mention even when it comes to cannabis possession now, even after it's been legalized for medicinal purposes, you can still get fifteen years in jail for possession, which is pretty again staggering uh, that is so. that's the same as like someone who violates 112 yeah no that's, that's <laughs> more that's much more most people who violate uh, no, no but the max i think know. the maximum sentence for 112 is 15 years uh it's something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so just going back onto that yeah. i mean um so the recidiv the, the i hate the this i can never pronounce this word the recidivism rate for 2016 which was the last year it was released was 70 percent which is staggering. I looked at some of the figures for Europe, and I couldn't get very good figures for other countries. Uh, in the UK, it's about 40, 50, just to give you an idea. So 70% is very, very high. And again, that's mostly drugs, because a lot of people are drug addicts, and they leave prison sometimes more addicted to drugs than uh, when they went in, right? Um, and, you know, I also wanted to point out the effect this has on families, so particularly working class families. So, you know, if a parent goes to jail, 
that obviously leaves a gap of labor for both childcare and employment, you know, income. So that's way less income for a household and a massive increase in labor for child raising, which is obviously pretty fucked up. And, you know, like study after study proves that poverty leads to crime and drugs. Yeah. So yeah. this really is a, a cyclical issue. And um, frankly, it's not one that I'm seeing to be particularly addressed by the mainstream of the protest movement. When I was, you know, I was opinion, thinking that I was thinking yeah, that before we it, came it needs onto to this. be at the top. It needs to be at the top of the demands uh, when I it comes so. to reform or abolition. Yeah. You know? I think prisons are very important, very important issues, and I don't think they're very contentious at all. It's not a very mm. contentious issue at all. I think the vast majority of Thai people do think that you know you should treat other people with respect right i mean that is or the at least reform of prison. No, just yeah exactly yeah. at least prison reform right they, they they probably think that oh well people shouldn't be stacked on top of each other or crammed in like sardines i um, virtually never heard it discussed in progressive circles right virtually never mm. yeah mm. i think Which i think really there's depressing. i think there's just a discord between um sort of people imagining the types of people in prisons that they, they, they I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to like create a straw man or anything, but I'm just trying to figure mm. out, you know, as a thought, ex thought experiment, what kind of things people might rationalize to um, not thinking about prisoners very much. You know, why don't? Mm. Why doesn't the average Thai person talk about prison reform? And because it's so common, uh, they're just in and out. And and when they ask, I think oh, it's what just, does it's normalized, right? Yeah, yeah. What's it? Oh, what does yeah. what does your uncle do? Oh, he's just a prison. He's just a criminal. <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> he's just a thief. I mean, like I, I just to just to just to give an example. Like I know somebody who's had a few family members go to prison, and they're yeah. they're a leftist. Like they're very far on the left, and and even they don't particularly talk about prison uh, reform or abolition that much. Like it's just not really. I don't know if it's like a taboo topic. I don't think so. It's just something that's not addressed, you know. Um, you would hope that maybe, you know, because stuff from the West, like political movements from the West, do kind of bleed into Thailand quite often. Yeah, yeah. Um, you'd hope that the prison abolition talk in the West would, but I, I haven't heard any of it yet. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, the yeah. closest you get is like judicial reform, and but that's, that's, that's different. That's in a different part. That's before yeah. prison. So. Yeah. But I mean, they're, they're yeah two lungs i don't know whatever oh no they're very, very um, yeah. yeah anyway so i mean that's a that's pretty much the sad state of the thai mass incarceration world um what is out of curiosity the uh, the, the sort of the um the amount what percentage of prisoners are used as forced labor do you reckon that is a great question I, i'm curious or like very very underpaid labor. Yeah, but, I know. mean, you know what I mean. I'm talking about like yeah. prison industrial complex uh, complex type situation. Yeah, that's a oh, great question. Oh, hello. Here's a thing about Thailand was planning to use um, prison labor in the fishing industry, but that was from 2015. Um, uh, so that was a Prayut idea. Uh, ah, yes, prisoners put to work in Thai factories, des um, desperate for labor. Uh, yeah, that was that was this year. That was this year. Right. Um, so that means, they, I mean, I, I mean, I have seen them on the road. Like I have seen mm, mm, um, mm, mm, mm. them on the road. But I mean, the the point is, I'm trying to uh, demonstrate is that, to some extent, the not to some extent, to a lot, a large extent, the prison question is a is a class question. You know, yeah. um, we saw that with the Red Bull case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the justice system. Sure. The justice system is not based on justice. Um, for the first part, if they can help it, it is based on wealth. And we definitely, um, I, th I believe I can speak for both of us, uh, we definitely believe that um, a key part of creating any democratic society is creating a much better justice rehabilitation system rather than the very big beat people to the, an inch, within an inch of death and then leave them to think about what they've done type situation. Uh, so you know, now. if 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 any of uh, the um, the leaders of the democracy movement, uh, organizers of democracy movement are listening, please bring this up a bit more. Um, it would be nice. It, it would be nice. You know, may, if not for us, think of all the uh, the thousands of the prisoners that might appreciate that. And you know, you know, it's not just. I, and it, I tell you what, I will just do a little citation here. It is yeah, brought yeah. up, but it's strictly in regards to. 112 cases ah okay um, right okay. and then then you see that you know what and not to be too critical of the current movement but you do mm. see its class character come through in that see, case i was do you think do you think okay 
do you think that 112 allegations or political prisoner allegations have a class character to them? Do you think that they're a bit more up above, like, you know, the rate of poverty? Mm, yeah. Um I don't want to get into speculation on that. No, I, I, I know, I know. Say, but what I'm trying to, what yeah. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to, I, I'm trying. I, I, I get where you're coming from, yeah, which is yeah. a lot of people who are uh, per- prosecuted under 112 typically tend to be middle class, especially the ones that are facing trial right now. And, and the people, the people who, the, the working class, what, what do they really get on, in, into prison for? I mean, they yeah, get into drugs. prison for, for drug charges, exactly. Yeah. So you know, when the the fact that the the, the movement is heavily thinking about political rights rather than something that's rather than you know all the different rights. things that can get rights, you, rather rights. than you know yeah. rights um that is it it's not you know we're not we're not, I'm not i'm not chastising them for it i'm just saying no. that you know this is something this requires criticism self-criticism yeah. you need to reflect on this point and yeah. You can you can be really clever about all these different other analyses you put together, but when you miss out various important things about Thai society, well, you know mm. what's the point of all this other stuff you say if it doesn't I, relate back to the people you're trying to connect with? And this is, yeah. and I have to say, like we're guilty of this too. I've, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I've written one article about the prison system once, and it was a massive overview one, and I, I've never really focused on it. Like I, mm. I am complete. I'm, I'm going to make more efforts to try and try and learn more and try and address that because I think we're all guilty of this. But, but I also think you know it's not necessarily everyone's fault to not know everything about anything. Every, sure. Eh, to everything about everything. Y- y- we have to you know pick our battles. So like if, um, but if you are going to be someone who talks about rights and talks about the constitution and talks about legislation and justice mm. why are you not talking about the prison system you know yeah that is in, in my regards main to the in, vast majority of people who are in prison yeah precisely Preci- yeah. Uh, you know we, we we talk about things from a leftist perspective that's what we know about you and you talk about burma because that's what you know about. i talk about <laughs> you know stuff i know but if they're gonna focus on these you things, talk about smoking weed in your room by yourself <laughs> at 3 a.m that's you know about <laughs> that's hey man everyone has to know a skill um but yeah, if these leaders of the of yeah. the democracy movement are going to talk about justice, then they need to talk about this. That's yeah. that's all I have to say. Agreed. So, do better. We'll do better as well. Um, let's oh, all absolutely. do better. Let's make a commitment. Yeah, you ready? We're going to do it. Good, ready? Doing good better. That's what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to do it. Starting. Ready? One, two. Okay, we've done it. Bang. We, we've done it. All right, mate. Uh, I think that's good vibes. So. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. So.